I remember reading an article about a track runner named Castro Semenya, and there was a controversy over whether they should be allowed to participate in the Olympics because um, they had a Y chromosome in their DNA, and so their testosterone levels were elevated, even though they had uh, identified as a female, uh, had female body parts, had always grown up as a female in their country, they were recognized as a female, and the governing body for this Olympic race said she, she couldn't run. Um, so there's this controversy because um, she did have elevated testosterone levels and some people felt like it was unfair. Um, and some people said, well, you know, she needs to be able to be who she is. And the governing body actually said that if she lowered her testosterone levels by taking birth control pills or, you know, doing other things that she could participate, but she didn't want to. She wanted to be herself. So what's tricky about this is that we've talked a lot about how we often like to think, see things in terms of black and white, either or, but oftentimes really our brain is wrong, that things are often gray. And in order to understand the other side and multiple uh, sides in an issue, we need to listen and we need to think and we need to decide what is in line with what we believe. <clears throat> this is connected to a story about identity for myself and thinking about like, what is identity and what does it mean? And how do we connect our identity to the outside world and deal with the emotions that come along with that? When I was in ninth grade, I remember I was in a biology class and there was a video that they showed and the video was about genetics. And genetics is interesting because there's actually a spectrum of genetics as well. Now, statistically, there's more often certain things that happen in genetics, but there are things that are not, you know, statistically always fitting into certain boxes. So in this case, we saw this video about um, people who have XXY chromosomes. So generally, uh, a male will have an XY chromosome and a female will have an XX chromosome. Uh, but there are any number of different things that can happen in genetics, and one of them is this XXY. And so people often have uh, a blending of features um, when it comes to gender. So we watched this video, and I remember afterwards going home and being really afraid. Uh, I was afraid that I was XXY. And the reason I was afraid uh, is multi-level. One is because as human beings, we like to fit in. And it's just part of being a social being. And, and when we don't fit in, sometimes we experience fear. So I had fear that I wasn't gonna fit in or I wasn't fitting in. The other reason I had fear is because um, when I was younger, I was quite chubby. So in middle school and early part of high school, um, I had a, a chubbier face and a chubbier body. And when I watched this video, I remember thinking about my chest and thinking like, I'm, maybe I'm XXY and that's why I have, you know, a chubby chest and maybe I have, you know, something like breasts and this is part of what's going on. And that fear was so deep because I was so worried about being judged. The end of this story is that I never talked to anybody about this fear. Um, I just sort of held this fear for myself. Eventually, it went away. Um, and today, you know, I'd never went and got any sort of test or anything like that to see what my genetics were. Um, but I look much different than I did then. Um, and the point is that it doesn't really matter to me what my genetics is, because whatever it is, I am still me. And I get to decide what my identity is and how I fit into society. I don't get to decide how society treats me, but I can process how society is treating me and circle back around to a comfort and a peace with who I am and who I want to be. If I were to go back in time and talk to a younger version of me, I would say that I should talk to people, that being open and talking to people that I trust, that care about me, that love me, that will be accepting of who I am no matter what, that that is always a good option. It always lowers my fear. If I had parents that I could talk to or, or brothers or cousins or a counselor, 
or another trusted adult, that sharing those fears and those uh, emotions maybe would have helped me through it and I wouldn't have felt so alone. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope you're having a good day. And most importantly, I hope that as you go through life, you can reflect upon and think about your identity and you can find comfort and safety with yourself about your identity, identity and then that you have people that you feel comfortable reaching out to. And maybe sometimes when we think about who those people are, if we're able to overcome our fear and we're able to share, we will actually see how much acceptance is there for us. Thanks.